Why the sky is so cool. This video is for all the girls posting sunsets on their IG stories. Just kidding. Half of the world is the sky. Like literally. Look up, look down. One seems a lot more common than the other. And that's looking down. Every day people walk down the street. I do it too. But one thing I always notice is that I'm looking down at the sidewalk. Never up. Taking in the view and just enjoying looking up. Even though it's 10 times more beautiful. Maybe it's because our genes are built in with looking down because our ancestors had to be cautious for every step when hunting and running through the jungle. But even then, we should be at the point where we start to change that. Maybe you can help me with that. I'm at least trying to look a bit more up. And if it's because you think this guy is boring, well, let me change your mind with this video. Crazy Sky Phenomenons so, let's start at the start of the day, where you can get the morning glory of a rolling cloud. Later, you can spot some crazy lenticular clouds, which just looks crazy. Sometimes people think they are UFOs, and these clouds can also be seen on mountains, looking like a blanket. Then you got some Asperitas, which is a crazy cloud formation that got a stormy, wavy look to them. Kinda looks like when a person sits in a hammock, if you ask me. Then you have the Mammatus clouds, that looks like a bunch of small balls in the sky, side by side. Some clouds also spawn a fiery swirl, where some of them turn into rainbow flames. Generally, just iridescence clouds are very cool, and they exist in many different forms. But the coolest of them all is definitely the polar stratospheric nacreous clouds. Mixing iridescence coloring with stretched out waves looking similar to the sky from Edward Munch's painting The Scream or Van Gogh Sky. Another cool cloud you can spot is a cloud of birds called the Starling Memorations, which is a form of dance the birds does at a certain time of the year at sunset. Another cool thing is one we humans create in the sky and comes from jets when they hit the speed of sound creating the sonic boom, which you can actually witness with your own eye, creating a small cloud from the blast. Now, how about a thing that can destroy things humans have created? We all know tornadoes, but what about SHARKNADOES, aka water spouts, which is a tornado that sucks up the ocean, creating a water spout, which I believe the idea for Sharknado actually was lightly based on. Not sure though. But what if you had fire instead of water? Well, that's the fire world actually, which also happens to exist and seems pretty crazy. What else crazy shit do we have? Well, the lightning storm outside of Venezuela at the end of the Catatumbo River, which is a storm that's active about half of every year. Now, what if you mix fire and lightning? Well, then you get volcanic lightning, which is volcanic clouds that gets electrocuted, and is hopefully the closest thing we come to something looking like the apocalypse. On the subject of fire and lightning, well you got some red lightning, better known as red sprites, which looks like the alien ships from War of the Worlds flying down from the sky. They look pretty damn awesome, and must have been pretty creepy to witness without knowing what they are. But on the topic of aliens, well, we of course got unidentified flying objects, which I personally believe is aliens, but UFOs, of course, is also a possibility to witness. Cool things to spot in the night sky. Now, later on the day when it starts turning into night, you might think there's no more things to spot, but you'd be wrong. At the start of the night, you can be lucky to witness noctilucent clouds, which is spotted in complete darkness and are the tallest clouds you can witness at 85 kilometers up in the sky. You can see them because of some ice crystals reflecting. These are very cool and can almost transport you to an ethereal type world when looking at them. On the topic of ice crystals, well, let's take a stroll to the cold spots on Earth, where you can spot light pillars, which can be seen because of the ice crystals in the air reflecting light and creating these tall light pillars best seen in cities. Now, when talking about cold weather and night, I of course have to mention the Aurora Australis and Aurora Borealis, which can be spotted there as well. The Borealis is at the north and the Australis is at the south polar. 
Other things you can spot in the night sky include planets, our own Milky Way, other galaxies, star maps, meteor showers, and sometimes the more scary ones, asteroids in the sky, like in Russia back then. An even more crazy video is an asteroid that turns the night into day because it's burning up in the atmosphere and the fire is so bright that it turns to day. Not literally, but it looks like it. As of now, this is the closest we are able to get to space or witness from space. So what if we took a look of how the sky looks on different planets? So. Actually, we don't have many pictures of skies on other planets, but there are a lot of speculations. But let's start with the confirmed ones. The moon, which is just pretty dark, but you can see Earth, so that's cool. Then we got Mars, which is just a bit dusty to be honest. Then we got some other planets, but all these are just concepts. We got one from Titan that's not, but there's not much to it. And I almost forgot, but also Venus actually. But it's just very greenish yellowish dust in the sky. Then we got moons like Europa, which looks pretty cool, and Io, which is also very cool. We also got some concepts of Pluto that looks pretty dope. One that's also very cool is Saturn, where it's believed you can see the rings in the sky, which is just awesome. Then we got Uranus and Neptune, that are just like wind and ice planets, which is also very cool. But Neptune you would pretty much just see wind. Now these cool skies from other planets could almost remind of something from a video game. So on the topic of video games, well let's take a look at what I think are the coolest skyboxes from video games. Now these are just my personal favorites, but I think most people will agree though. On the topic of planets I showed you before, let's take a look at Destiny. It takes place in our solar system and most of these planets are real and exist. This is probably the best simulation of these planet skyboxes and it just looks amazing, where you can really take in a crazy looking skybox. The creators of this game is Bungie, and before Destiny they created another game called Halo, which also have some of the craziest skyboxes ever. For example the Ark, that sits on the edge of the Milky Way, and therefore you can see the entire Milky Way when looking to the sky. Also, another sci-fi game is No Man's Sky, which is also crazy where you can pretty much keep looking until you find your perfect skybox for you. Even more so because you can travel through the skybox if you can put it so. The planets of World of Warcraft also got some crazy skyboxes. For example, a beautiful ethereal sky, a land with a blood moon, and a sky collapsing in on itself. Planets ablaze in the sky and a sky filled with Lovecraftian monsters. Also, I will never forget my first look at the Outlands as a child. That shit was crazy. The new survival game Valheim also got a cool skybox with the tree Yggdrasil hanging in the sky. We also got the beautiful desert of Journey with the giant mountain in the sky and the occasional shooting star. A game that also reminds of Journey is Absu, where the skybox is almost the ocean surface, but then again, you also got the actual skybox being very calm and beautiful. A skybox that reminds very much alike and is also a personal favorite of mine is those in the old Spyro games, just being so dreamy and magical with its stretched out horizons. Another game with a cool skybox is Tales of Monkey Island but instead of being stretched, they are almost like a painting to look at. We also got the beautiful skybox of Super Mario Galaxy, where you can see the planets in the sky, but except those planets are part of the level and you will step foot on every one. This game also have one of the creepiest skyboxes ever seen, with the mystery of these figures. Very creepy. And on the topic of creepy, well, we of course got the From Software games. Dark Souls with the beautiful skybox of Erythal, the Boreal Valley, the Eclipse inspired by Berserk, Bloodborne with its funk type sky, the Age of Ancients and the upcoming Elden Ring with giant trees that could remind of Valheim. Another game with a very eerie vibe is of course Half-Life, which also contains some of the most depressing skyboxes ever and also colorful sometimes. But yeah, the depressing skybox of the Combine is of course iconic.
Now we have talked a bit about some creepy skyboxes, so when we already at it, let's deep down into creepy sky phenomenons. One of the signs of the apocalypse is blood rain. And wouldn't you know, that can actually happen. Must have freaked people out first time that happened. Another one is called the broken spectra, which is a form of reflection of yourself, but I can also imagine being out in the dark and turning around and quickly just seeing a shadow person must freak you the fuck out before realizing it's your own shadow. Another one comes with the tornado warning, which is a scary thing in itself, but this warning siren just takes it to a whole nother level. I can just imagine hearing this while spotting a giant Lovecraftian monster in the fog's distance. Which in itself, like the fog, is a pretty damn creepy weather phenomenon. Shout out to Silent Hill. Now, one I remember being creeped out as little was the Heaven's Trumpets. Which is actually a true phenomenon, where people can hear trumpets coming from the sky, almost like angels in heaven playing on them. There should be a natural explanation for these, but still, they're pretty damn cool slash creepy, and just the thought of it being real is pretty damn cool. On the topic of heaven, well, I think we of course should touch on that subject as well. So, let's look at correlations between sky and heaven. The idea of the sky being heaven, we do not know where it derives from, though it has for thousands of years been a place we could only dream of reaching, making it an obvious place for the gods we started to praise to reside in. Where the stars were thought to be the gods looking down at us, it was only a place we could aspire to reach, and therefore became a place where only the greatest could reach. The sky became engulfed in mythos, and we started to imagine and ponder on how it looked up there. And with the rise of art, philosophy, and more, we started to visualize this place. Today it's a well-known concept, and we got tons of beautiful stories, art, and more to look at that depicts heaven, the home of gods. The grandness of the sky. The paintings of the sky just became grander and grander. Clouds began to span tens of miles into the sky, engulfed in a sea of angels and saints. These are personally some of my favorite paintings because they perfectly creates a place that seemed greater than life because of its grandness, making it look like a place only fit for a god's home. And if you're good enough, even you can make it there. Now, what's crazy is these clouds seem so great that you couldn't witness them on Earth, only in paintings. But we actually got some clouds that really get this big. For example, the shelf clouds. They almost look like walls around heaven that span tens of kilometers into the sky. Another crazy cloud slash storm is the supercell, looking like God descending down from heaven to step foot upon Earth. Another favorite of mine is the pyrocumulus cloud forming out from a volcano smoke, forming this crazy ass cloud. I just love how damn giant it is, really capturing the essence of heaven's grandiose. And at last, what I call a glimpse of heaven, being probably one of the most common things you can witness. God rays. The sun's shine passing down through small holes in the clouds, creating this crazy glow from the sky. I love imagining God's kingdom lying just above that cloud, and just imagining that the God Ray is the shine from heaven gazing down upon our land. Even better is when you see them passing down through the skies out in the horizon, just stretching for miles. Anyways, thanks for watching and hearing my thoughts on why we should appreciate the skies more. Basically, just my excuses for allowing me to talk about the sky for 10 minutes or so. Anyways, 